tell me a little bit about um, how you got out. What was your ability um, to, to get to the airport and to get on a flight? I think the previous Thursday, um, when a number of provincial capitals fell on the same day, Kandahar, Herat, um, Ghazni, Baghdis, and perhaps one or two others. Uh, at that point, I thought to myself, well, you know, th things are moving very quickly. But then I went to work as normal on Sunday morning. I attended some meetings and the reports kept getting worse and worse. By this time, Jalalabad had fell. And so at that point, um, I decided to make my way to the airport. And uh, when I got there, I was surprised to find that a significant portion of, of the government had left or was in the process of leaving. Um, and then, of course, uh, the news came that the president himself had already left. Um, at which point, instinctively, I knew that there, there would be some chaos. Uh, so we uh, went on a plane. Uh, everyone attempted to board this now infamous Cam Air plane that's still on the tarmac there. And the one that showed uh, the people standing on, literally on top of the plane yes, at the time. Yes. Yeah. And we boarded that and everyone tried to board that plane. Uh, so it was a passenger plane for perhaps 300 people, um, you know, perhaps a couple of hundred or a thousand boarded that plane. I realized it wasn't going to take off. Um, they had mentioned that the plane had no uh, pilot. It had no fuel. Um, so we went down uh, to the tarmac, and, and I think it was the beginning of the scenes, which now you see on TV, where there's hundreds of people. Every person is trying to find some sort of aircraft. Uh, there were he various helicopters taking off in an ad hoc manner, a small military plane taking off. Uh, and there was one military plane not uh, from the US that uh, everyone was rushing towards. Uh, I wasn't hopeful, but I think um, uh, we, we, we went towards it and it was a C-17 where the, where the rear of the plane was going up and, and my friends, my colleagues had pushed me on the plane. Uh, I was not supposed to be on that plane. It wasn't a military transport where I had a ticket to get on. It was essentially one that I uh, forced my way on and was fortunate to get on at that point. And this is part of why uh, in those initial photos, including that one incredibly overstuffed transport, it's mostly men. Right. It's not women. It's not kids, because, I mean, you know, your just physical ability to get on, get through the scrum of what is an incredibly chaotic period. That's that's basically the situation that the central bank governor finds himself in in Kabul. Yeah. So if if the central bank governor is, is, is in that position, you can imagine the position of, of everyone else. At the end of the day, I boarded the plane. Uh, I had one or two bags, but we I left them and even one of my shoes came off and I was walking on the plane with, with one shoe, and, and that's how I left the country, which was um, not the way you want to leave. Let me get to the area that you know the most about, which is the state of and the future of the Afghan economy. Talk a little bit about the, the, both the timeline and the challenges economically that you expect this new government to face. The economic challenges are going to be very, very large. I think one, um, the stock of international reserves has already been frozen. So that's $9 billion, which has been taken away from uh, being utilized. Secondly, it's not only the stock, but the flow of international uh, aid that's gonna be uh, reduced. Uh, thus far, I believe there have been reports that Germany has frozen $300 million in aid. Um, the EU has frozen $1 billion in aid. Um, I believe the World Bank has also frozen their portfolio and uh, there was about $3 billion provided on an annual basis for salary support and, and equipment support for the ANSF or the military. Of course, that's not going to be on the table. How long do you think before uh, there is, you know, let's, let's just say a, a, a full-blown financial crisis? I think there's a very short time frame. Um, we already ha are in a situation where uh, the banks have been closed. I believe that they should open soon. And once they open, uh, uh, individuals will not be able to take out all of their savings. So there will have to be some sort of uh, withdrawal limit placed on, on those persons or those withdrawals. Um, uh, inflation uh, already is going to be uh, rising. There are some reports that wheat prices have already doubled in the capital. Um, and that's the basic commodity food stuff. Um, and the currency is going to depreciate. They're going to have to cut 
expenses uh, significantly. They're going to ha have to cut services. Uh, and all of this is going to impact uh, the people of Afghanistan. I'm wondering uh, how you feel about uh, American and European and other sanctions against this new Taliban government. You always wonder to what extent uh, punishment being meted against a government you disagree with ends up causing more suffering on the ground um, than you had intended. The Afghan people are undeniably going to be hurt by um, over, over the coming uh, months and years. Inflation is going to go up, incomes are going to go down, uh, bank accounts are going to be frozen. And I wrote this in an op-ed where I think humanitarian assistance needs to begin e even immediately. Um, the, the question of whether that should be provided through, through government channels or through UN agencies, I think uh, I'll leave in, in the hands of, of the policymakers. I think, um, but at the end of the day, th there has to be some assistance uh, being provided for them uh, beginning almost immediately. Um, what, what I, based on my understanding, um, I think it's going to be difficult for uh, Western governments to recognize the Taliban uh, and to be able to unfreeze these uh, large foreign reserves or to begin donor programs uh, until a few steps are taken. I mean, first of all, you have to have formed a government, which hasn't been formed. There has to be a review of that government, whether it is inclusive, whether they will uphold uh, women's rights, women's education, other standards of international governance. Uh, and then within that framework, it's still challenging um, to be able to convince stakeholders in each of these countries that the Taliban is reformed and that they should be provided aid. So I, I think whether it happens or not, it's going to be a long time frame. And I think it's going to be challenging. And in the meantime, humanitarian assistance should be provided.